Why are military age men pouring across the United States border, being given refuge, given cell phones, given ID cards, given money, being taken care of? Why is this happening in the United States? And the Biden administration pretends that it's not happening, but we have the footage. Take a look at your screen. Of course, these are multiple multiple reports now of military age men uh, pouring across the United States border. And it seems like mostly from China. So it's been a great mystery over the past year. Why are they doing this? Why are they arriving? If you're fleeing a war zone, you, of course, show up with your, your children, your women, your wives, right? These are people that you are saving, the families that you are bringing and trying to find a better life for. But no, there's no children. There's no wives. There's no women. It's just men. Well, at least until yesterday, we could speculate. We had some idea why this was happening. But on the floor of the United States Senate, Senator Dick Durbin has now let the cat out of the bag and explains exactly why this is happening. What troubles me about the debate now about the southern border is it is one half of the immigration equation. Yes, we need order at the border. Yes, we need to have changes in the laws that reflect the reality of the overwhelming numbers from all over the world who are coming to our, our shores and our border. But there is also an incredible demand for legal immigration into this country even now. The presiding officer, my colleague from the state of Illinois, has legislation which addresses one aspect of that. Her bill, and I hope I describe it accurately, says that if you are an undocumented person in this country and you can pass the physical and the required test, background test, the like, you can serve in our military, and if you do it honorably, we will make you citizens of the United States. Do we need that? Do you know what the recruiting numbers are at the Army and the Navy and the Air Force? They can't reach their quotas each month. They can't find enough people to join our military forces. And there are those who are undocumented who want the chance to serve and risk their lives for this country. Should we give them the chance? I think we should. And let me tell you about... So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. It seems like we have an answer to the great mystery now why this is happening. Someone who's been tracking these military-age men uh, coming across the border is Anthony Rubin from muckraker.com. He's been doing amazing reporting on this deep into the jungles. He's been tracking this from through South America, from Ecuador, tracking uh, these migrants all the way up to the United States border and so much more that we could talk about. Uh, Anthony, welcome back to the show. Good to see you. Thank you so much for having me on, Clayton. I appreciate it. My pleasure. It's great to have you back. I specifically today, we could talk about so much of your travels and we'll have you back and we can talk more about what you saw in Ecuador and other parts uh, south of the border. But today I specifically wanted to focus on this military age men Chinese story. So you've seen the videos at the border. Of course, you've seen your reporting. You saw Senator Dick Durbin there basically confirming why they're coming across. What did you discover and uncover uh, in your travels as you were tracking these individuals? Yeah, absolutely. So as it relates to the Chinese, I mean, as you said, I mean, we, we could talk about so much here. This is, I mean, this crisis is extremely complex, but as it relates to the Chinese and what I saw, um, the Chinese have basically established dedicated networks along their route all the way to the United States. And so what we discovered along our, our trip from Ecuador all the way to the United States border are dedicated hotels, basically dedicated hubs where these Chinese illegal aliens stop at. And, you know, it's like known along their route that you will stop at these specific hotels. Uh, one of the ones that we stopped at was this hotel in Pasto, Colombia. And we just stumbled upon it by accident. It happened to be near a, uh, a an airport there. And we, we showed up and we were the only people that were staying at that hotel that were not Chinese. And all of them, every single one of them uh, was headed to the United States. They were either going to be continuing and crossing through the Darien Gap, or if they had the appropriate visa, they were going to be flying directly into Mexico and then crossing up there. But the point is that, you know, whereas, you know, for example, the Venezuelans, as an example, they are extremely poor. They just kind of trek up on foot. They'll, they'll pitch tents along the way, uh, stuff like that. The Chinese have dedicated hubs, hotels that they'll actually stay at along the way. And it's a very advanced route system. So it's an advanced route system structured by whom? Who's setting this route system up? Is it the United States? Is it NGOs? Is it the, is it the Chinese government? As far as I know, it's it's done by Chinese for Chinese. Um, I mean, I don't have any evidence. You know, we know that the United Nations footprint is all over this this route to the United States. But as far as these hubs go, 
you know, there is no evidence that I have to, to indicate that it's run by the United States or, or the United Nations. Uh, it appears to be just Chinese for, by Chinese for Chinese. You know, you had me on this past summer. We discussed a blueprint that I was giving by a Chinese illegal alien. Uh, that's how we actually, you know, followed this route. We just followed that same blueprint. You know, everybody, I saw the comments on your show after you published it. They thought I was lying to you or that I was some sort of uh, conspiracy theorist. And now we've actually followed the route. I mean, now I have all the evidence. And so one of the stops on the route was in Pasto. So we stopped at this hotel. And sure enough, it's just full of Chinese. So the point is, if we go back to that document, that document was just written by a Chinese person, could be CCP, CCP affiliated. I have no idea. I can't confirm that. Um, but, you know, it, it, is the CCP, for example, involved in this? I would find it hard to believe that they are not. Let's put it that way. So a targeted strategic invasion. And then it just it's it's odd. Then, of course, then why is the United States government, if this is a targeted willing invasion of the United States, you hear Senator Dick Durbin on the floor of Congress saying the reason, you know, we have we need military age men coming across. They will be given citizenship. They will be given, you know, they'll fight in the military. They'll be given citizenship. And if their backgrounds check out, he kind of just said that as an aside. Oh, if their backgrounds check out, he just kind of made that as like a little sidebar. Like, we'll we'll probably check them, I suppose. But they'll be brought into the United States military to fight on our behalf because U.S. military recruitment numbers are down. So the U.S. military would be using Chinese Communist Party uh, military age men to fight on the United States behalf. Like something is incredibly fishy here. Right. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that is probably the only way that they can actually amass enough manpower to drag us into another decade long endless war. If we could even afford that, if the U.S. dollar doesn't collapse before that, I mean, that's a different story. But any patriotic American that has a good head between his shoulders knows that all these wars at this point are total nonsense. Everybody's waking up to the BS that is these endless wars throughout the world. Now it's the Ukraine and, and Israel. Nothing to do with uh, American sovereignty or security. And the only way that they're going to be able to get enough manpower is to get these people and, you know, ship them over there and guarantee them citizenship. And I believe that that's the game plan. And then, you know, you'll give these people citizenship, however many millions of them, and, you know, many more are on the way. And it will just wash out all the homegrown Americans. That's what this is. This is replacement migration. It should be extremely evident at this point. Uh, you know, there's been a conspiracy theory, and I love that you're the breaker of conspiracy theories, by the way. So that's hilarious to me that the last time you were on our show, you exposed the China blueprint. And people said, that's a conspiracy theory. Anthony, you're just full of garbage, you know, sitting from their basement typing out on as keyboard warriors. And then you and the team actually follow the entire path and confirm it, which is amazing. So there's a conspiracy theory. Here's another one for you to bust that there are uh, Chinese spies living in the United States, that there are Chinese spies coming across the border and they've infiltrated and they are here inside of the United States. And of course, people on the left would say, that's a conspiracy theorist, you're a MAGA nut job. What have you been able to uncover in that regard, Chinese spies in the United States? Oh, gosh. I, so again, just to bring it back to the uh, discussion that we had this past summer in that expose that we were talking about that I published, I had an interview with a Chinese legal alien that is now living in the United States. And uh, he told me flat out that there are Chinese police. And that's why he wanted me to blur out his face because he's worried that they will come knock on his door and possibly kidnap him back to China. In the video that I just published yesterday that we're now talking about, I interviewed another Chinese man who openly said, yeah, there are Chinese police. And none of this is, a, yeah. I mean, in the United you know, States. In the United States. In the, they'll openly tell you this stuff, you know? Um, and I mean, this is not even this is not even a uh, debatable anymore. I mean, there have been Chinese police stations that have been busted in Los Angeles and New York City and New York. So right. this is what's going on. And, and, you know, so I mean, so we know that that's going on. We're, I'm not even going to sit here and debate it and act that, you know, try to qualify that statement. No, we know that that's going on. But then the bigger concern or one of the bigger concerns, I mean, it's concerning on a, on a multiple of fronts. But one of the bigger concerns would be, OK, now you have all of these thousands, tens of thousands of Chinese uh, foreign nationals that have come to the country illegally. There's videos of them. A lot of them, they'll, they'll be brazen. They'll post on social media, firing off weapons and such in the desert. We've already published that. But now what happens one day when the communist Chinese police come knocking on their door and say, hey, listen, we need a favor for you uh, or else this might happen to your mother or brother or sister back in China. Or we need a favor for you just, you know, or we might show up and 
you know, break your legs or do do whatever to them. I mean, just blackmail. Think of any sort of blackmail that they could uh, use to leverage somebody. And that's what's going to happen. And so to think that that's not already happening and that that's not going to continue to happen and that's not going to accelerate as even more tens of thousands of Chinese pour across the border it would be extremely foolish not to expect that. Um, and it, it should concern everybody. It's terribly. Well, it concerns all of us. It certainly doesn't concern the Biden administration. Uh, and frankly, very many Republicans either seem to be focused on this issue, much more concerned about Ukraine and much more concerned about what's happening in the Middle East than what's happening at our own border. Uh, Anthony Rubin, amazing work. Thank you for the continued amazing work over at muckraker.com. We'll have a link uh, in the show description for anyone that wants to check out your latest report as well so they can go and check out the great journalism that you guys are doing over there. Anthony, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Clayton. We'll talk soon. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.